Hi everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today to do two variations of techniques that I love. I'm currently mixing a half teaspoon of Wilton's Violet food coloring into a half cup of water. And I am going to dip dye 100 grams of Stroll fingering weight yarn into this color to break the violet into the pinks and bright blues that we love. The twist today is that I'm going to wash the yarn, I'm going to let it dry, and then I am going to dye, over dye that yarn with Jacquard Black dye using the dry application that I have been experimenting with lately. And so what we will end up with, hopefully, is a black yarn that instead of the white specks we'll see a gradient of the broken violet on our skein of yarn. But to start, we need to make that broken violet gradient. And so let's get ready to do some dip dyeing. I have added eight cups of water to my dye pot. And today I'm gonna to start off with one tablespoon of white vinegar. I have found that as my concentration of acid gets more diluted, that I get a more stunning gradient of the pinks and blues. So normally I do two tablespoons of vinegar, but I wanna see what we get if we start off with one, and then we can always add more vinegar to get the more vibrant blues in the end. Let's dip dye our yarn. I am going to reduce the heat. Waiting for some of those bubbles to calm down. Add our food coloring, stir it up. And now we're gonna immediately start dip dyeing our pre-soaked yarn. I pre-soaked this Stroll fingering weight yarn in just some plain tap water. And with each dip, I add a little bit more of the yarn to our pot. And, yep, and then when the yarn starts to turn blue, I've got a littler blue section than normal, but we add the rest in, and you always kind of want to sort of shimmy the tip a bit. Um, and this is because, you know, if you don't agitate this the fiber at the tip, you will not get, um, the, the blue all the way through, you might end up with a little more white. You could still end up with some white in here, but this helps. Um, I'm gonna make sure that the heat is on low, and I am gonna let this sit for five minutes, and then we can evaluate if we need to add some more vinegar. But you can see that there's very little color left. So I think that reducing the amount of acid might actually be a pretty decent starting place. It has been five minutes, and that water looks very clear. I don't think any other acid is needed. You will see that we do have a little bit of the red three that crashed out around the edge. So I'm taking care as I pull this up to not sort of wind my blue onto the edges of the pot, but you know, we have here a very, very nice broken violet gradient as the base. So now I'm going to let this cool completely, wash the yarn, and then let it dry. And when I come back, I'll show you this dry yarn, and we will get ready to over dye it with some Jacquard Black Acid Dye. Normally, I would show the whole washing step on camera, but since we will all show the washing after I add the next dye, I'm not going to bother showing the washing of just this yarn. Our broken Wilton's Violet yarn is dry, and the colors are extraordinary. I am almost sad to over dye this one since this is a almost perfect example of my breaking violet technique. However, 
I am equally as excited to rub this in some black dye and see what kind of effects we get. So now I am going to mix the dye. I'm going to add the dye into a squeeze bottle so that way I can easily manipulate it and play around with it. So I'm gonna start by adding one teaspoon, approximately, of white vinegar to the bottle. The reason why we need to add acid to the dye is that we've already rinsed and washed our yarn, so there's no acid in the yarn. So in addition to the heat that we're gonna apply later, the acid is necessary for us to add color to the yarn. And to this vinegar, I'm gonna add a third of a cup of our 1% black stock solution. And this is one that I mixed, I guess I mixed this two and a half months ago for reference. And everything that I have here today is my exclusive, dye exclusive equipment. So that way, uh, nothing, nothing I, I'm showing today is used for food. Okay, now I'm going to mix this up and we can start dyeing. And we will mix the, the, my squeeze bottle has a cap so that way I can mix everything up so we can get started. So to dye this yarn, what I'm gonna be doing is adding our dye with acid into this plastic basin and then literally rubbing the yarn around so that way it will pick up some of the dye on the yarn. And since the yarn is dry, the dye won't be able to soak in very far and that's what will give us the sort of marbled patches all over it. Now I, and I'm gonna keep going until I have colors that I'm satisfied with. The, um, it's not necessarily gonna be all of this. I think I used this amount of dye um, to dye a sock blank and a skein of yarn in the past. So I'm gonna add just a squirt of our dye, take a deep breath, and we're gonna start sort of rubbing. <laughs> And in the past, when I was trying to do this with a bunch of different colors, um, that was a bit harder because I had to really try to keep half of it out of the pan. So this time, it might be a little easier, but you can see we're getting, we're getting some nice black on here already. I have plastic wrap on my work surface. Oh, that's a lot of dye. I have plastic wrap on my work surface so that way I can try to keep things uh, somewhat clean. But the key is to sort of rub and move, move around as you're doing it so that way you can get dye all over the yarn. I mean, in theory, you could do this straight on a tablecloth or something, like a plastic vinyl tablecloth, but you, do, you wouldn't need to do it, for example, in, in a plastic basin like this, but I just find that it works nicely. Um, and I'm also sort of trying to keep a little bit of a hand on the yarn so I don't end up with a tangled, tangled mess. But ooh, maybe I'll end up using a lot more of this than I expected to do. And so you could, you could rub, you can pat, um, but I'm just trying to get some of the dye all over, but in this case, more so than the, the other yarns that I've done with this in the past, I am more okay with there being non-black patches on here. But um, for all this is still really cool looking, I have a desire to add a lot more. But it's funny because um, it's hard to, it's a little harder to see where the black sort of is ending up when I'm doing it this way, just because there is so much color on the yarn already. And I've sort of abandoned my hold. Okay, but everything is still, since it's dry, it's pretty easy to re, there we go, 
get everything sort of held. Ha ha, da da da. <laughs> but I think so far I've added about half, and I mean, it's really cool looking. Yeah, I have a feeling I'm going to use this whole third of a cup. I guess it makes sense because I used, in the other videos where I did this with the black and gray, I used two thirds of a cup um, total, and I guess on 200 grams of yarn. So I guess it makes sense that I would use all of this for 100. And so I can take this section and sort of spread it out and sort of plop it on to get, you know, various sections to have more access to the die. Now, if I was to let, you know, leave it and let it sit in here for a while, you could end up with some bigger patches. But I'm interested in both the, the smaller bits and the bigger bits. So you could really do this as random or uncontrolled as possible. Uh, da, 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 da. I like things that are feel end up feeling really nice and random. But it's funny to me how subtle this feels as well. Uh, because probably because the colors are already darker than say the black and white that we had before. But even my gloves, you know, my gloves have color on them. And so as I'm doing this, you know, clearly we're getting um, some color transfer from, you know, my gloves, even if I were to touch and spread. So you could do this in a much more controlled way by um, using even a paintbrush or something if you wanted to, if you wanted to add some, say, speckles to the dry yarn. Okay. This is looking really, really nice. I'm so excited. Okay, I think this is our, oh, no, I might have one more squirt after this one. Do, do, do. But the thing is that this will be, will have non-repeating colors now because, you know, these, uh, this is not evenly added by any stretch. Peek, but all right, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do, all right. So we've used a total of a third of a cup, which I believe is about, maybe between 70 and 80 milliliters of the 1% stock solution. I'm adding some in there, but now I'm just gonna kind of go for it. I have added the one third of a cup of the Jacquard Jet Black Acid Dye from the 1% stock solution into this 100 grams of yarn. And we've got some really, really cool sort of modeled color. Now we have to set this color. So I am gonna place this yarn in a steam basket and steam the yarn for 20 minutes. The yarn is now in a steamer basket on my stove top for 20 minutes. 20 minutes have passed. And now we can remove our yarn. I know from experience that the yarn is not too, too wet, but I'm really excited about this and now I just need to let it cool for a little bit so we can wash the yarn. Our yarn has cooled and it is now time to wash it. Now this yarn is actually pretty dry. Um, I mean, it's a little damp from the steaming, but don't forget that it was dry when we added on only a third of a cup of a liquid. So, this is something to keep in mind as we start washing. There we go. From the first soak, the only tiny bit of blading seems to be a hint of blue, um, which could be a little bit coming from our broken violet. Um, <laughs> but I don't see a ton of black brushing out which means that the color is in our yarn. I have now just added some clear dish soap to help lodge any extra dye that might need to come out. Um, I might let it 
soak a tad bit longer than I would normally, just because in case there were any solid particles of the black Jacquard jet black dye in here, I want to make sure that comes out. But when I'm done washing the yarn, I will hang it up to dry. Here is our finished dry yarn. And wow, these colors are amazing. As we zoom in on various sections, you can see that there are some light black specks and also longer patches of the black color. So when this knits up, you will get really random sections of black. Conceivably, we could layer this yarn with a third color and a fourth. There are so many different ways that we could play around with this technique. This over dyeing technique sort of makes the color transitions from the purple to blue even a little more subtle. The black sort of even things out and reduces the brightness of this, um, at least a tiny bit. This dry rub technique is one of my favorites ever, and I cannot wait to explore this further as a way to over dye yarns with still seeing the original yarn underneath. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and give this video a like. I release at least two new videos every week and also do dyeing, spinning, and other unboxing live streams. If you want to support Chemnitz on a more personal level, check out our Patreon. The link is in the video description. Thank you so much for watching!